Yes. Okay. It's so just a full screen, I think. Yeah, now. I'm doing that. Yeah. And I think, uh, wait a moment. I was discussing something like, uh, yeah, I think we were there. Right? Yeah. So yeah, I think. A bit, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So this diagram and the bell two. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. So there was a one question. I don't know if you have been discussing. So then you can decide if you want to switch on or switch off the camera. Eh? So don't, you, but I mean, I'm very happy if you, if you keep it on, so then I can see you. Then, so there was a question related to why it is asymmetric, huh? uh, the B factories, but you have uh, this asymmetry. I don't know, Jim, if you have been discussing that in the, during the exercises or not. Yeah, so, so you had that one uh, question where you, you could work out what the momentum is in the rest frame of the Upsilon 4S. Mm -hmm. It's very small. Yeah, you get it, uh, you get, they get it, uh, uh, an answer. Yeah. Well, I got the answer and okay. there were a few questions. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, and then, so then, is, uh, uh -huh. then working out this macroscopic distance that they fly, this 200 micrometers and yeah, so there was uh -huh. some discussion of it. So, okay, so then so, I'm, I'm just, I'm repeating, okay, because I think it is always good to repeat if, if maybe someone, it, I think it is not bad to repeat. The, the thing is that, okay, you have, you have, a, a, there were before, before the B factories, you had Cleo, and then you have another a, experiment where you have the epsilon 4s, which was, uh, yes, produced at rest. So the epsilon 4s, this resonance, which is a big, big quark uh, state, uh, it has a, a mass of 10.54 GB. And they think about it. And the, the thing is that when you create uh, a, a, this, this, this uh, resonance, this epsilon 4s decays into a B and a B, B and a B meson and an anti B meson, okay? With a cross section. In fact, this is epsilon 4s, two BB, BB events, and it is about one and about, okay? And then the, the thing is that because the mass of the B mesons, I mean, it, it is so, it is about half of the of the total epsilon force in a mass. What happened it is that the B and the B meson and the, the B and the B bar mesons they are produced at rest. And when they are produced at rest, they decay and the, the distance that they fly uh, it is it is very very small. I think it is more than 50 microns if I'm not if I'm not wrong. So the idea that uh, this was before in the previous experiment, uh, for instance in Cleo. So the idea was okay if we uh, you know, you know, uh, relativistic. So if we have a small boost, if we we put a, I mean, a, a momentum for the B, then the, the fly distance will increase, and then we will be able to better uh, do measurements of where they are produced and decay. Let's say, okay. So this was the idea of having this boost, and this is boost is not very, it is not very, it is not very large. It is uh, at the end what you have. It is a different in the instance between the production and I mean, the, the, the B, like they say. It is about 200 uh, microns, but it is more uh, that uh, I mean it is better because the resolution of the detectors uh, it, it was much less. So then you can you are able to really recognize when you have one of the Bs and then when you have the other. So you are able to to see. Uh, which is the which is this uh, distance, let's say, and uh, I don't know if Jim also was telling you, but uh, the importance of this distance it is that what happens in the epsilon forest. I think Karim Travelsi, the professor Travelsi, will will talk a lot uh, about it, and the people that they are working in Bell, I'm sure that in Bell too, you, you know very well. What happens it is that at the epsilon forest energy, as, I mean, when you are producing uh, the epsilon, the, the the B and the B bar. Mesons are, produ are producing a coherent state. Uh, this is so in here, which means that if you have a flavor in one instant, a B or a B bar, the other has to be the opposite or the, the antiparticle. Okay, and then this makes uh, you that you are able, if you are able to to tag one of the of the B which are created automatically, you know that the other in that time it is uh, it has the opposite. It is the 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 B bar, okay, and then because you are very interested in knowing a CP violation and mixing in in in, in these flavor factories, you can see how one particle how it is the oscillation between particle and the particle because you know exactly when it is produced. So it is this distance. It is very important to to be able to separate it. Okay, I don't know if I have been 
clear enough or or uh, or not. But I mean, the most important thing is that you have a small boost, then you allow the the beam mesons to fly, and then you can separate it uh, better. And um, uh, while well, we have, of course, uh, we if we have to to have one asymmetric uh, uh, beams, uh, you prefer. You, you, what you have it is that you have the electrons with higher energy, which is much much easier as compared to the positron. So always the positron has a lower energy in, in all the B factories, and the electron has a larger uh, uh, energy. Okay. And uh, okay, so this is the delta experiment. I think you are going to okay. You know many of you. You know about it, uh, and uh, you are going to. To, to hear, I think, quite a lot uh, from, uh, uh, from Professor Trabelsi in the coming days. Okay. So uh, what, it, what it is about uh, uh, the number of events that we have in the different experiments, this is also what it is important. Some of the experiments have some advantages, some others have uh, others. Okay. So in the case of the LACB uh, experiment, or in case in general in LAC experiments, uh, uh, what we have it is that we have a very large uh, uh, cross section, and uh, what we have it is that um, because we have an acceptance, you remember that uh, the, the LACB experiment that I have been talking about, it is just 30 percent uh, the geometrical acceptance. That means that what we are going to recollect it is uh, 118 microbombs, and uh, that um, uh, the, the BB. The BB bar pairs produced in one inverse femtoband, which is the measurement. I don't know if you are familiar also, but this is the usually the, the, the luminosity, the, the units of the, lumi the, the luminosity is in inverse femtobands. And I'm sure that you have seen this kind of plots. And if not, you will see it. Uh, I mean, in any of the conference that you are going to be, the how uh, balls one, one experiment or, and how it, uh, it is collecting uh, the data. So you can see, for instance, in Bell 2, which was starting, and this is, uh, I think it is a bit old. I don't know exactly what it is, the luminosity that it, uh, it is uh, having in Bell 2. I think it will be more, but about it. And this is the, the, the femtobarm, so the inverse femtobarm, it is the unity, uh, the unit that uh, we use for, for measurements of luminosity. Okay, so the, the BB parts uh, that are, are produced, uh, if, you, if you take into account this cross-section, it is, uh, it is a uh, once uh, about two uh, times ten to the eleven. Okay, so it is really a um, big, big amount of data. And in the case of the Bell two, also you can do it. I think there was one of the exercises that you can see, which is the luminosity that you are expecting, depending on uh, like the number of, of BB events or the number of BB events that you that you you expect. Uh, uh, if you take into account uh, the um, the cross section and, and uh, the luminosity, okay. Yes, uh, for you to know using this formula here. Okay, and once I think you know also, but it is important uh, from the experimental point of view, you can you have the the, the instant and luminosity, which is uh, per second, and then you have to integrate the luminosity, so then you have the number of events that you have uh, during the time. This is why it is depending on the year you are accumulating more and more and more data. Okay. Uh, the comparisons, if you have been discussing with him in the exercise uh, problems, you will you will already know, but just uh, for you to, to, to see. So, okay, this is uh, the, the different uh, uh, properties that you have, uh, and uh, depending on the experiment, for instance, if you have a, in the epsilon for S or in PEP or in PEP, in Bavar and Bell uh, B factories or for Bell 2. And uh, this is in the, in the collisions uh, in proton antiproton at Tevatron, and uh, now what it is in uh, in proton proton collisions at LAC. Okay, so the production you have here the data, the production uh, cross section, how it is. Uh, and you can see that it is quite large in proton proton uh, collisions, uh, the, the typical BB bar rate. Uh, that you see here, the pile up, it is just, uh, I don't know if you are familiar also, okay, the people working on CMS that I think there are also, I think you know, it is just uh, uh, when you are not able to separate the different events because you, you have uh, too many uh, number of primary vertexes, uh, the, 
the kind of particles that we can have. So the, in the epsilon forest energy, you, have, you just can have uh, B mesons, uh, B neutral and charge. Uh, so you have 50% of each one. About, but in the case, for instance, in the proton-proton proton collisions, you can uh, create other uh, species. So then you can create uh, the lambda B baryon, cascade B baryons, or even higher uh, baryons, like uh, higher mass baryons, like the omega B. So you have some advantage. You can, you can have the BS uh, uh, meson in the, in the B factories. In, not, in Bell 2, it could be possible if they run on a larger energy as compared to uh, to the epsilon forest, but then the cross section will be will be small. But in the LAC, uh, you have all these kinds of uh, of mesons, so it is very interesting for for, for this kind of physics. The the boost that it is provide, it is very different. This is a, a small energy as compared to to 14 TV. So in the case of the of the B factories, okay, you have about 0 0.5, and in the case of the of the of the LAC, you have a much larger boost. That means that the, 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 the B hadrons produced, they, they are flying more, so the, 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 the flight distance, the separation, it is larger in the proton-proton collisions. Um, here, the good thing of the, of the experiment working at the epsilon forest is that uh, you have basically uh, what it has been produced from the BB decays, so from the B meson decays, you have just that. Because they are not, I mean, they are not, uh, it is not that like they are adronizing, it is that you have the B, the B and the B bar uh, mesons. In the case of uh, the proton proton, it is much more complicated because you have a B and a B quark, you have a B quark and an anti B quark, and they, they adronize. And then at the, at the same time, you have many, many uh, available energy, and then you have a lot of pions which are created, pounds and another particle. So it is much more complicated to be separated. This is much more clean in the case of the epsilon 4s. Uh, and uh, in the case of the of the the, the production vertex, it is uh, not reconstruction. In the case of the the epsilon forest, uh, and in the other case, you, you can see it uh, in the proton proton. You can see when it is and can reconstruct it from many other drugs. Uh, and uh, the the advantage of the of the epsilon forest, uh, it is that uh, as I told you, it is a current. Uh, um, a way of production because it comes from the epsilon forest. That means that you know exactly if you have you, you if you know one of the dimensions, you know exactly what happens with the other. And in the case of the of the LAC, this is not happening. You, you can have one B uh, quark which is adronizing to a B meson, and then uh, the other can be uh, adronizing to a B baryon. Or I mean, just you have to of course the charge. And, has to be um, has to be the correct one, but uh, it is not clear in the way. And um, a, some advantage, a much more advantage in the case of the of the epsilon forest, it is that the, the flavor tagging power I was talking before. So the 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 way of separating and to know exactly if we have in the initial state a B or anti B, it is uh, much better in the in the um, case of the of the B factors as compared to. So I think both have different uh, different uh, characteristics, and it is very very good that they are running. I think we are in a very good uh, epoch because uh, we are, they are going to be running in the same time, and then they will provide uh, uh, results uh, which can be uh, comparable and with different uh, uh, properties. Let's say. And then there was a question that I was uh, uh, thinking that uh, maybe you can try to check uh, if you, I think it is very important that you do the kinematics. Uh, probably, you know, I think I'm sure that you have all of you study uh, quite well kinematics, uh, but at least uh, here in Valencia and my, in my city, what happened it is that uh, even if everyone knows very well the kinematics, when they are doing the exercise, it's always very complicated for them to do it. So I advise you just uh, to do it because I think you, you need some training. For that, so I think it is a good uh, exercise that you can do just yes, to check uh, which is the 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 pion uh, momentum in this kind of decays produced depending on what you are produced, and this is a very important decay that we will be talking also today. Okay, so what are we measuring the experiments? Uh, this is important. Uh, which kind of observables? Uh, maybe you are familiar also if you are working in the experimental. Uh, uh, environment, but uh, yes, in the case that you are more theorists, uh, what we measure are invariant masses. This is uh, just the 
peaks that you can see in each of these uh, of these plots, for instance. And uh, you know that um, what we do, it is just, for instance, if you have two muons, we just, yes, it is not yes, but we take the form momentum of the of the of the muons, and then knowing that uh, the particle identification hypothesis that we can uh, that we can infer from the from the information from our detectors, then we can uh, perform the sum of the four momentums and uh, have the invariant man. So you have, for instance, the jet side uh, decaying into two muons. We measure decay time distributions. Uh, this you can do it. Uh, from the distance between the origin and the decay vertexes and uh, using information of the particle momentum. So you have the, 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 the length, the decay length and the momentum, you can, you can measure the, the, the decay time distribution. You measure angular distributions also. Uh, these are also important observables. You can just, uh, from the momentum of the particles, from the vertices that they are created, you can you can see which are the angles that the particles that they are produced. Uh, we measure branching fractions, but it is just the proportion of uh, events that they are created in some specific channel. And this is obtained just counting, not just, but counting the number of events and uh, knowing many of the properties of the detector and efficiencies, we will see that tomorrow probably. Uh, but from the mass distribution, if we know the number of events that they are uh, created, uh, we can we can measure branching ratios, branching fractions. Uh, we measure the differential decay widths. Uh, so the branching fractions, we will show it. I will show you. I think you know it, but I will I will give you the more information about that. But uh, uh, you can also measure properties of the differential decay width uh, as function of uh, of different uh, variables. For instance, q square. We are going to talk a lot. Uh, uh, later today, uh, the, the Q square, which is just a form momentum transfer, or you can have differential decay with uh, a function of angles. We will talk about this tomorrow. We measure a uh, time dependent uh, asymmetries. So how uh, how uh, how behave one of meson and anti and anti meson how they behave with time, and for that it is very important. We need uh, this flavor tagging that I was trying to explain before. And usually, and mainly in, in the case of the proton proton colliders, what we measure it is ratio of observables, because then you, um, you, you, measure, I mean, you, you can sell many of the experimental, uh, this is the type of, here, uh, of the theoretical uh, uncertainties. Okay? You will see that in, in a specific, uh, in a specific uh, decay, in a specific measurement, but yes. For you to know. Here you have, for instance, an example of, uh, of uh, a, a mass distribution of a deep side going to a muons, which has a very good uh, resolution. So then you have you can see that it is very uh, the width is very small. You have the the the, the mass of the BS, which is decaying into a, a, a photon and a phi meson, which is uh, it is larger resolution. And you have, for instance, here. A, a decay distribution a time a, a decay time distribution. Okay, I, I will tell you. And uh, in all these observables, what I think you know, but uh, uh, just in case that someone does not know it, what you have to do it is always when you are measuring something, you have to include uh, all the experimental effects. Okay, so you have usually a, one a physics. Uh, you have some. A observable, which is, uh, for instance, uh, supposing that you have the decay cam. All of you know that you have uh, if something is decaying, you have a particle decay, it is exponential, so it has this uh, kind of formula, okay, which depends on some parameter. In this case, it will be the this list out the proper time, okay. We have this physics, and then we uh, we know that. But when you are measuring, you have two important things that you have to take into account. One, it is the acceptance. The acceptance, it is the, um, uh, it is just an efficiency which depends on the variable that you are interested. So it is just the number of uh, detected uh, divided by the number of uh, the, the one that they are produced. So in the case that, so for instance, this is this we are in in our x now here. This observable it is the time, okay, and then uh, this is the acceptance as function of the time. 
So in the case of a ideal detector that you are selecting all the information, you will have something which is completely flat and it is at one. So you will have a one, 100% of the events and uh, which are not depending on the time. But in the case that you are, for instance, in uh, one experiment, you can have something of this shape, which is telling you, okay, if the time is very small, I'm not going to be able to separate the vertexes. And then that means that I'm not going to be able to, to, be able to measure properly. Okay, so then uh, here I have a hole, I have a gap, huh? and I'm not able to measure when, the, when the, the decay times are too small. So in this function here, I cannot, uh, I cannot measure this. And then maybe if the if the if they are if they, they are decaying, I mean the lifetime it is too it is it is too too long. Maybe they are escaping to the detector. So then here also I observe kind of uh, decreasement. So instead of being flat, of being flat uh, at the beginning and at the end, I observe some dependencies. Okay, this is an, an acceptance, and it depends on the variable that you are studying. But you will have it in all the analysis that you are performed as an experimentalist. Uh, or that you read it if you are a theorist. And then we have the resolution that I think all of you know very well because you all have uh, phones and then you know which is the resolution of your camera, but it is just telling you which is, I mean, if you are able to, to, to measure properly uh, the, the, the physics value. So you have some Gaussian resolution, for instance, in this case, uh, you have this, um, you have the, the, the mean and the, and the and the sigma, the sigma it is what we call the resolution. If the mu is different to, to, to zero, that means that you have a bias and that the value that you are measuring, it is not the real one. So because the resolution, it is giving you the relation between the reconstructed variable that you want and the, and the true one. So if it is, in, if it is different uh, of zero, that means that you have to apply a correction to what you are measuring. So ideally it should be zero. And the resolution, as smaller as it is, as a better physics are you going to be able to perform, okay? So then any observable or any distribution that you are going to, to measure, and in all the analysis that I'm talking in these lectures will be affected by, uh, by all these acceptance and resolution, okay? And that this is what we are measuring. And uh, what we do usually it is that uh, you, uh, we, we, we measure, we measure, we use uh, a simulation, we, we use Monte Carlo simulation, to study the acceptance and the resolution functions, because in our Monte Carlo, in our simulations, we know what we produce and we know which is the effect of the detector. And then we can uh, extract this information. And it is even better, and this is what we try always to do, because our simulations are not perfect and we are not able, even if more and more we are doing better, but we are not able to, 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 to simulate so perfectly the, the the effect of the detector and not all we are not always knowing which is the physics behind it is better if we use control samples uh, from data with uh, usually you use similar to the signal channel that you want to 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 measure to extract them okay so i think this is all what i wanted to say as introduction and uh, i just giving some references in case you are interested uh, about uh, that you can have mainly for instance, in the case of the physics of BB factories, everything related to the measurement that they have done in Babar and Bell, you have many reviews which are very interesting. And I think for next lecture, I think it was going to be very good. And uh, the heavy flavor average group, would you have the last results in the in the flavor sector? So then just uh, in case you want to, to have some values. And okay, so I don't know if you have any question. Uh, can I ask a, a question? Uh, sure. Uh, so uh, uh, I was wondering about this uh, observables that you mentioned, uh, especially like, uh, so I wanted to ask about uh, this time dependent asymmetry. So could you give an example of uh, what this means? Because I really did not understand it. Yeah, I think uh, I, I will I will prefer that you wait a couple of days because I will be a uh, detailed, uh, I detail, um, lecture on that uh, so i think you oh, will thanks, understand thanks. much okay, better okay. so all okay. these all these observables i'm going to talk a bit more um, explain better but it is just basically so an asymmetry you know what it is right an asymmetry it is that you have a, a the different ways of decaying from a b particle or an anti-b particle okay so if you are measuring so then you you can measure the evolution the time evolution that you have of one 
a particle and the other and check the asymmetry, the difference, basically, in, in, a, in a very rough mode, okay? But I will give the, the more details, okay? It is just uh, the difference in, in particles and antiparticles of the, of the time dependent, the time evolution, okay? Okay, thank you. Any other question, please, or comment? Okay, if not, uh, let me move to the other part uh, uh, that I wanted to talk today. It, it is the um, CKM matrix. Uh, I think uh, probably uh, Professor Glossman is going to talk also after my talk, so I'm not going to give too much uh, phenomenological um, theoretical point, uh, but I will just want to give you an idea of what it, what we do, what we measure in terms of uh, of this uh, CKM matrix, okay? So probably next, uh, also in the next lecture, it will be uh, quite complementary to this one. Okay, so as I have been talking this morning, uh, in the standard model, uh, what we have it is that the transition between different quarks are go being governed by this uh, kabibo kobayashi maskawa matrix uh, that we were talking, you remember? But it is just giving us uh, the coupling, the, the, the probability of one quark uh, to uh, transform into in another one. Okay. And uh, the, we were saying that, okay, if you are in this uh, diagonal, then the, they are, they are the, the, the process which are uh, most stable. So it is in the same generation. And if you are out of the diagonal, then you have a suppressed uh, uh, transitions. Okay, because you are changing generation. And the point is that, okay, the amplitude for, of uh, adron decay can be described using what it is uh, called of a, a hefty field theories, uh, where you have a, a, some, it is like uh, you were discussing before uh, about the, the, um, the Fermi constant. Uh, you have here also Professor Grossman, how, how one can, the vertexes, they can just, uh, um, uh, some the interactions they can you can kind of use just uh, one constant or you can just uh, uh, depending on the energy scale that you are you can you can uh, uh, just substitute uh, all the process or all the all the all the loop for for some uh, piece okay I will tell you I will talk more about it tomorrow and then you have this uh, uh, CKM matrix elements giving the the, the the transition probability of the the vertices. Okay. Then, of course, it is not so simple as it is because you don't have just the quarks, you are uh, inside hadrons. So then you have to take into account also all the effects uh, coming from the uh, QCD, from the strong interactions. You have a lot of gluons there and the uh, and, uh, cucubar parts. And this, uh, it is coming all from in this part that it is the chronic max, uh, matrix element. But at the end, the Whatever, what uh, all the all the all the amplitude of a process, it is going to be governed by this by these things here. Okay. So related to the CKM matrix uh, that you will be, I think you will be hearing a lot today. It describes the rotation for quarks between the the weak against tense and the mass against tense because you know that they are not the same. So you have this is for quarks and this is for anti quarks uh, and uh, uh, so. You, you just have this uh, this um, this element for for the transition, and uh, uh, the the CP violation that it is happening in the standard model it is coming because uh, you have complex phases uh, in the CKM matrix elements. Okay. In the standard model, this kabibo kobayashi maskawa matrix is complex and unitary, so it is one of the main uh, characteristics, and uh, you can. Uh, you can parameterize this in terms of four independent parameters. And these parameters are a fundamental constants of the standard model, and you have to, they have to be uh, determined from the experiment. So they are not predicted. They are different ways of uh, parameterizing. You can, uh, you can use uh, three angles uh, and one phase. Uh, this is what it is in the PDG usually uh, using. And then you will have uh, these, uh, these three uh, rotation matrices that you can see here. And uh, this is one way when you have uh, the, the Kabibo angle here, there. 
And uh, another way it is uh, to use because uh, because we know that the the, the CKM matrix elements are as I told, as I show you in, in the morning they because they depend on where I mean which is the kind of transition and then we, they are kind of a hierarchy okay a hierarchy then what we one can do it is that okay if you if you use a, a perturbative approach and then we develop in terms of the lambda which is this Khabibou angle we can use these parameters uh, which are which are giving you kind of the, uh, the the strength of the transition so the parameters are lambda a rho and eta and then you will have uh, in the case that you have a transition between two and d or i mean the same generation it will be order one if you are you are changing in the, between this one between the cd and us you have order lambda which in fact it is lambda it is just uh, this transition you have a order lambda square if you are going in this transition if you see or is to see and if you are going through a from third to first generation then you are a order lambda okay so it is like just showing you i mean or expressing you the the, the hierarchy of the of the ckm matrix and uh, using this parameter which is uh, a, what it's called the Wolfenstein parameterization, it is in terms of these uh, of these four parameters, you have this uh, uh, all of the CKM matrix elements can be expressed uh, like that, okay, till uh, lambda to the fourth. Okay, you will see, so then here you see that the lambda, that means that the lambda, it corresponds to the VUS elements, so uh, from VUS transitions, from the transitions, and uh, this is the Kabibu angle. And um, then you have the other, so then you have the phase here. And um, uh, yeah, and here almost uh, it is uh, one, so it is uh, the diagonal. Okay, this is order lambda fourth. If you consider next to leading uh, order corrections in lambda, because it is a perturbative approach, uh, then maybe. Uh, if you are increasing the precision that you are determining this parameter, maybe this can be important. And okay, just yes, to have here the, the expression if you want it to a higher precision. Okay, and uh, also, okay, these parameters, uh, sometimes you have a change of variable and instead of using just rho and eta, so you remember four parameters, we have rho, eta, a, and lambda. Okay, this four, it is the, the ones that they are important. Sometimes you, you, you will see it that uh, you have Rho and eta bar, which is just that you have this uh, chain of variables here. Okay. And uh, why it is the interest of this, or how we can uh, work with this uh, CKM matrix? Okay. Okay. Before that, uh, I forgot the CP violation in the standard model. It is uh, it is uh, the requ the requirement that for for having this uh, uh, CP violation, it is coming from uh, from from this uh, constraint here. I'm not going to, to, to talk too much about it. I'm not going to give the details, but I, uh, you, you have to believe it. Uh, and uh, well, here, what you have it is the Jacobi invariant, uh, which you can express in terms of the different parameters. And uh, at the end, you have this expression here, and it is order 10 to the minus 5, which means that uh, it is uh, a specific violation according to what we have. It is a small in the standard model. Okay, and it cannot uh, explain the observable asymmetry of the, of, the, of the universe. We will be talking more uh, about it in, in a couple of days, and I'm sure that you are going to talk uh, to, to hear a lot uh, about uh, also in these sessions. So the status of the CKM uh, matrix at present, you can report it. There was one exercise that maybe it was better to explain this before, but I wanted that you just, uh, maybe you can just check uh, because this matrix it is supposed to be unitary, so then we can check the values that we are uh, obtain from the for the CKM matrix elements if they are at present with the present accuracy, if they are uh, satisfying the unitarity. Okay, so each of the elements they are measured from different uh, they are obtained from different uh, measurements. In the case of the of the um, of the UD, you okay you have a super low uh, zero plus to zero plus beta decays, and it is known with a very high precision. Then you have, for instance, okay, the VUS, uh, you, you, you are um, using semi-leptonic and leptonic count decays. 
uh, or the need of the case uh, to, to, to obtain this value and also it's measured with uh, high precision. You have to remember which are the, the one of, uh, of uh, each of them. Okay. Uh, what else? Uh, for instance, you are, here you have the transition from CHAM in some in CHAM semi electronic uh, uh, decays. Uh, you can get uh, a BCD and BCS. Then what else? Uh, you can, this is obtained from, from video oscillations. Uh, one, the, the precision that they have reached at present, it is very high. So you have very few percent. And one of the elements which has less measure at present, it is this one. It is the VUB, which is given the transition between, uh, between uh, the third and the first generation, which is still not very well. Uh, no. Okay, this is one of them. And also the BS oscillations, they, they have to be input a bit. The thing is also what it is important it is that in Seoria, uh, okay, we have very clean uh, uh, vertex and we can, in principle, measure. But in practice, as I told you, you have uh, many effects uh, which have to, uh, we have to take into account and which makes uh, that the, this, the experimental the results maybe are not so precise because you are have to take into account many of the of the QCD processes, and this is usually uh, calculated by lattice QCD, and they are also inputs in this uh, theoretical. Something that I wanted, and maybe you have you can check uh, um, about satisfying unitarity. You have to be careful in this uh, in this report because I think the PTG it is imposing some constraint of unitarity. So if you want to really uh, check. If the unitarity is satisfied, you have to check which are the results that they are obtained without any constraint. Okay, so then be careful with that. Because if not, I mean, if you just take this value that I have put here, they will be unitary because uh, it has been computed uh, like that. I mean, it has been constrained to that. Um, so the point is that. Uh, so because it is unit, because this uh, CKM is unitary, so then okay, you, you, you can have some relations. And one of the uh, most uh, convenient one, it is if you multiply this row and this column, this row and this column, you obtain this relation here. Because uh, each of these elements you can express, as I told you, as function of these four parameters in the Wolfenstein parametrization. So A, rho, uh, eta, and um, and uh, what I uh, have missed, uh, and lambda, okay, in this, uh, because you can, you can expect this of done and that, you can create, a, you can create, a, um, or this describes a triangle in the uh, row Anita plane, or in the row bar Anita plane, and then these triangles, it is uh, giving you, so the sides uh, and the angles of the, of the triangle, gives you some relations of the uh, of the of the of the CKM matrix elements. Okay, so you have, for instance, in the case of uh, you can this if you also if you normalize uh, appropriately this expression here, at the end what you have it is that one of the sides uh, uh, okay it is divided by a lambda q, and uh, the the base of this triangle it is one. So this is just for uh, for convention by convention and to have it properly uh, normalized. So then, uh, so each of the sides can be uh, can be expressed in terms of these parameters, and also the angles can be expressed in this element. So, for instance, you have this gamma angle, which is related to these CKM matrix elements, and then to these parameters. Yes. Okay. So the point uh, of doing that it is that uh, because uh, you have many observables, what you can do it is, and each of these observables give you some. They depend on these CKM matrix elements. You all these observables you can uh, express in terms of these parameters. And uh, doing that, we can put all these parameters together or all these constraints from each of the observables together in this uh, row eta, pla uh, eta plane and check if uh, there is consistency or inconsistency. So for instance, uh, what, so the idea at the end it is to over constrain this unitary to triangle measuring as many uh, flavor observables as we can. So for instance, if we measure the B to U lepton neutrino uh, transition versus the B to Cham lepton neutrino transition. So this is uh, a change in the, from, from third to first generation. And here uh, it is just from B to C, from one, uh, third to second. So then uh, this is more favor. 
you will have something the the, the ratio of the the ratio of the of the, of the width uh, goes like vub divided by vcb squared which is about 1 over 50 and if i put uh, if i'm checking here and uh, in this uh, if i'm checking here what it is vub and what it is uh, vcb and then i express this matrix elements as function of these parameters at the end what i have it is going to be an expression like that okay so this in this triangle what it is doing it is defining a, a circle okay this ratio it is defining a circle in the rotor in the row eta plane if i am measuring the time dependent asymmetry that we will we will check in some of the, in some special process um, we will have a constraint that it is in the row eta plane it is different so then you have this uh, uh, two bands here so depending on on the on the on the on the process depending on the observable i will i'm going to have different uh, this is measuring the data angle okay but then the idea it is that okay so in uh, in in if if in the ideal case that i am measuring with a uh, infinity precision what i will be it will be just a, a, a expression a function in this plane in the case that it will give it will give it in me from the different decays in real in, in the practice okay it is i don't know what's happening it is not uh, working there was supposed to be kind of uh, animation i'm i'm wait a moment sorry for this uh, i don't know why it never happened before but uh, let me share something in the powerpoint maybe it is um better so the idea it is that uh so in the case that i don't have i have an infinite precision then i will uh, okay sorry let me check if uh, you can see them now can you see it Yes. Can you see my slides? Okay. And can you see that? No? Yes. How it is yes. evolving? Okay. So this was the idea. Okay. So what I wanted to show you. So the point is that uh, each observable is given a constraint in the row eta plane. If um, if uh, if I have an error, if I have an uncertainty, instead of having just a function, what I have it is a band. Okay, so each of these bands here represents uh, the measurement with uh, the uncertainties. And each of them, it is given a different constraint. And the idea is that, okay, I want, okay, if I have a repeated, so this is VUV, then you have the gamma angle, you have different things, the, the, the mass difference. So each of them, it is given some, some constraint in this plane. So if all are green, if all are green in the same uh, vertex, I will have this triangle here and everything will consist in with the standard model in the flavor framework. If there is, if there are inconsistencies, and it is, I mean, it is defined in different uh, vertexes from different observables, that means that I will have new physics effects there. Okay, so this is the idea of this um, of this uh, unit data triangle. Okay, just yes, to burn constrain uh, it uh, and then to to be able to distinguish it. How it has been evolved? So you can see it. Uh, I mean, this this was coming at the, in the in the nineties. Uh, you can see which was the precision from the different observables. So we had a very very large bands, which means very large uncertainties of the observables. But we wanted also to know always if this everything was uh, fitting in this upper vertex. Okay, you can see that uh, this was in two thousand and six, uh, and uh, after the B factor is how well we are able uh, to measure uh, many of the observables. So you can see, and you can see also how well it is fitting in the in the vertex, okay? So at present, we have very precise measurement of the CK matrix elements, which are fundamental parameters, as I said, you and we have to measure them. Um, the angles and the size have, uh, have uh, to be measured, and they have been measured in many different ways uh, for, for looking in consistency, uh, which will mean that we have quantum effects uh, uh, from new particles uh, at three level processes uh, new physics is less expected in principle because you don't have so much loops so then you are not expecting so much contributions 
So then one thing is that you can compare three level processes, for instance, BCB and process from, from, uh, from the B to CHAM, comparing to other processes where you have much more loops uh, and then you, you, can, you can have a, a, a quantum effects. Uh, and if everything is consistent with increasing precision, that means that the new physics scale has to be higher. And then you expect particles in the loop which are higher and maybe not able to be discovered in the, in the LAC, as I told you in the moment. Okay. So how we measure CKM uh, matrix element from one, one, just one example, for instance, that I want to give. I could be talking about uh, measurements of any or all of these measurements for, for, for weeks. Uh, I'm just going to give you in this lecture because I, if not, we will have no time. In fact, I'm not sure even if we are going to have to finish today. If not, we will finish tomorrow, no problem. But um, just uh, a, I want to give you some example of how one can measure one of these uh, CKM matrix elements. Okay, some of the quantities or some of the of the of the definitions that I suppose that you know, but just to remind you, what it is a decay width, what it is a partial decay uh, width, and the lifetime, or how they are related. They related. So this is the decay width. This is the sum of the different partial widths uh, of a process, and it is uh, one over over tau. The branching ratio, it is just when you normalize and then you have the partial uh, decay widths. And at the end, uh, you have the different factions and some, some decays uh, from uh, some different processes. And the decay length that I think you have been using in the, in the, in, in the exercise, uh, it is just uh, the, the average uh, decay length, it is just the boost. Uh, uh, times uh, C tau. Okay, so this is I think you know it, but uh, just for you to know. Another thing that I I guess uh, it's important that you know, and I'm not so sure if you know it. Uh, uh, it is uh, what it is the difference between exclusive and inclusive uh, processes. Uh, you know it. Have you heard about it? What it is the difference between an inclusive and an exclusive process? Yes, yeah, so exclusive processes are where um, final state particles are measured, and inclusive where we take uh, some of all the quads containing the measurement. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. So exactly. So the thing is that uh, in the case of exclusive process, you are focused on a specific final state. For instance, in this case, you will have a B meson, which is decaying at, into a lepton uh, and um, a neutrino. So we are. I'm going to talk about semi leptonic decays. This is just uh, this kind of transition where you have a lepton and a neutrino in the in the final state. If I'm talking about exclusive process, means that I have a very defin uh, defi defined uh, final state, and then okay, I'm um, for instance in this case it will be a B meson going to a D star meson, a lepton and a neutrino. So it will be this diagram here, and. Uh, if I am talking about inclusive process, that means that what I'm considering it is anything which has a big quark and it is decaying to a chunk quark. And the theory that uh, that uh, it is behind of each of, uh, of, the, of uh, the process is different, or to describe it is different. Okay, the theory it is not that it is different, but the, the way of description, let's say, the way of description is different. For instance, in this case, we are using a heavy quark effective theory. We have we are using uh, to compute form factors, we are uh, using lattice QCD and like function rules. Uh, and uh, in this uh, in this case, for instance, we are using just the operator uh, test function. And from the experimental point, uh, here we have low backgrounds, and it's mainly coming from uh, higher stairs of, of the dimensions of the test dimensions. And in the case of, uh, of uh, in the inclusive processes, usually you have much more background, my higher background. Okay. And uh, but in principle. The process, I mean, the, 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 the CKM matrix elements that they are uh, are the same. And yet it is the theory description. The theory has to be the same, but the theory description, uh, usually it is different because it is more convenient, OK? So the, the first measurement of the CKM matrix element DCD uh, was uh, uh, done by, was performed by Mark II at PEP uh, Collider at uh, 29 GB in California in 83. And uh, this was a quite surprising uh, measurement, in fact, because what it was observed, it is that the, the, the lifetime, it was done 
by measuring the lifetime of the hadrons. And it was and what it was measured, it was that the lifetime of the hadrons it was uh, quite high. Okay, it was uh, the the width um, the width of the uh, the decay width of a, a semi-leptonic process of this kind can be expressed in terms of uh, BUB and BCB because it is a, it is a process, so it will have a, a formula that it is about that. So it depends on the Fermi constant and it depends uh, on some kinematic factors that they are. Uh, just some numbers, and from that you can you can you can uh, measure the PCB. Okay, the weight. Uh, the the most important thing in this kind of uh, uh, measurement is that you have to separate uh, where you have a, a B or a CHAM uh, produced. Okay, and here you have this was the, the first, and this was based on the impact parameter because depending the the, the B atom was flying more so uh, because the it was decaying later, so then you, you were able to separate between uh, B and Chan quarks, okay, with very few events. And this is uh, what it was uh, measured, so that the, the B lifetime was long, and that, will, that, uh, that was meaning that the, the missing between the third generation of quarks and the lighter quarks uh, was much weaker than the missing between the two first generation. And this was very surprising at the time because uh, one was not expecting that. So here you have uh, the value okay, in the paper, in the original paper, it is called UBC, and, but it is BCB basically, and this is taking into account that the BUB uh, was very, very small, and uh, this was measured with a 20% uh, error. Okay. And this we are talking about uh, uh, 1983. So in uh, 1987, this was the status of the BUB. Uh, BUV, you know, the BUV, BCB mainly from uh, from uh, uh, the lifetime, the P lifetime constraint, and this was uh, supposing different so these values. It is uh, supposing different uh, uh, ratios for assuming different ratios of BUV divided by BCB. Okay. Uh, what um, what how can we measure uh, in a with better precision, how we can measure uh, this uh, CKM matrix element, or what it is uh, the way to do it. Okay, as I told you, this is the in the in the real life. What we have it is this um, this uh, a process where you have the QCD and the differential decay width. We can express in terms of the of the Q squared. Q squared it is just the form momentum transfer between between the initial state and the final state, or okay, just the sum of uh, of the of the lepton and, uh, and neutrino system, so the, the momentum of the lepton neutrino system, okay, and it is uh, I mean it is coming from the from from the different thematic configuration where you have this is it will be for the minimum uh, square square where you have that uh, the 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 B star in this case the B star meson is taking the energy or the maximum Q square which is produced the 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 recall of this, so it is at rest, the B star it is almost at rest. Okay, so you can express the differential decay width of, of this kind of exclusive process and in terms uh, of, uh, of this, uh, the Fermi constant and, and BCB. Then you have a, a kinematic factor, which uh, you can compute as function of Q square, and then you have the form factor of the transition. And this form factor, it is giving you all this effect here. And this is very, very important to be, con to be known with, uh, with hard predictions. So 20 years after Mark, the two, it, is, it is already time. Huh? So I don't know what to do. I think maybe I can stop here and then we continue tomorrow. Yeah, if it, you, you have some more on semi-leptonic decays, right? So yeah, I have quite a lot more on semi-leptonic yeah, decays. So I, I think I, maybe I think it is good to, to stop here and then I will explain a bit more uh, tomorrow. As I told you, I even if I have four lectures, that's not mean that it is one hour per lecture because uh, this depends a lot on how it is evolving. So not, I'm not worried about it. Huh? So, but I prefer maybe that we stop here and then we can we can have some question or if you want to something so yeah are, are there any questions on this the, the measuring uh, the hello scene? yeah hello yeah so uh, i have just one doubt that uh, 
like you have said in inclusive decay there is a large background uh, so but i have stated that inclusive uh, yeah in, in inclusive so Mod. experiments mm-hmm. use cut uh, but uh, don't this cut that reduce this inclusivity so how this how after applying cut uh, the inclusivity is there Yes, this is a very good question because, uh, uh, in fact, you have to. In, so, in principle, in the theory, you don't, you are not included cuts. Uh, but if the theory it is, uh, it, you can, you have to kind of include it. Uh, you have to correct. Uh, you have to 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 take into account this effect. Uh, so yeah, so you you have to take it on, into account in the theory. Yeah. Okay. So, so that will that will uh, give some type of uncertainty, right? Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, for instance, okay. in the case of so, um, just an example. In the case of uh, semi-leptonic decays, in this case of uh, beta charm semi-leptonic decays. Okay. So the experiments mm-hmm. they cannot they can about to have, for instance, a cord a cut in the lepton momentum. Okay. This usually it is done by measuring the moments of the. I'm not going to enter in that, but moments of the of the, of the different distributions. But the, for instance, the lepton momentum, you you, uh, you you need it in the in the, in your experiment. You, you need to have some cuts, uh, and uh, in principle, in the theory, uh, it is not this cut. It is not given. So you have to modify it, or you have to 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 take into account this for for the observable at the end. Okay. Okay. So then, then uh, how you much this? You can reduce an error. This depends on, on the how much for it. Yeah. So uh, just the, in continuation, that then how this V like uh, here VCB uh, will be reliable in the inclusive processes. There, there will be large uncertainty because of that, right? Or is there any okay. way to? In the case uh, of the VCB, in the case of the VCB. The theory it is better uh, if I remember correctly. The theory it is better as compared to the exclusive one, because here you have the form factors, and here you have the operator product expansion. So the theory I think it is much uh, better control in the in the inclusive. I have to check, but I will say yes. So no, basically I I was just um, uh, working for VUV. For VUV, there's a large background because of B two C also. B two charm, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so in that case, if I if uh, experiments use cut, then the then the V V VUV from the this B two X U L new will get more theoretical uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, so so if if experiments want to uh, determine the VUV from the inclusive modes. So, mm-hmm. is there a way to reduce this uh, uncertainty due to the inclus- due to the reduce uh, reduce an in- inclusivity because of the cut? Uh, I mean, I, you you will have to 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 do the best you can to to avoid. I mean, for instance, uh, um, I'm guessing, and uh, um, if uh, depending on the experiment, uh, this cut. Uh, Depending, for instance, it will depend also on the energy that you have for for the V for the V for the V atoms that you are creating. So, for instance, in the case of the experiments that they have uh, working for Bell two, I guess, uh, for instance, uh, then you will have to have a, a cut which is higher as compared to other experiments, which will be cleaner. But in the case of proton proton, you have I mean, you have a, a neutrino, which is very, very difficult to measure. So, some electronic decays in proton-proton environments are very complicated. So then, you are not you. You will have a lot of background. So I, I, I don't guess it. I mean, I don't think that it is an easy thing huh, for 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 that. I think the experimental, yeah, to reduce the backgrounds in this case. Uh, okay, you need the uh, uh, techniques. Uh, I mean, sophisticated techniques of analysis. I would say. Okay, thank you. So there was one. I don't question. know. Maybe, maybe I don't know, Jim. Maybe you want or someone. Want I, to... I I think this is a good question, and I think it will be partially addressed in um, Ifa's course and also in yeah. Karim's course uh-huh. about about this. You know how one has to measure a partial branching fraction and the shape of the spectrum, etc., to extract uh-huh. these parameters to a certain degree. Uh-huh. 
But th there was one question in the chat about uh, the unitarity triangle fit, what, wondering why there are two bands for sine two beta. So why there are these two, yeah, the, the green cross here. Yeah, because in principle, if you are believing that the, if this is what it is giving, just the constraint, eh? you, have, you have this ambiguity. If you think in this, uh, this will be the one that it is uh, giving, like uh, fitting the standard model, but you, there is no reason in principle to, to remove the other one, mathematically, just this one. It is because you have this ambiguity. Okay. So I think if there are no more questions uh, yeah. now, uh, thank you very much, Arantxa. For... Uh, you're welcome, and we see you uh, tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, yes. I, I...